Hi guys, Adam the OT back again with some more simple, fun and effective games and activities. As always, if you like these videos and want to stay updated, don't forget to click subscribe. Any videos you'd like to see, let me know in the comments and I'll be delighted to do a video for you. Okay? So, this is the first in a series of videos I'm recording back to back actually. It's like my greatest hits. These are activities that are above all really, really fun. I've used them with loads of kids and they really work well. They're low cost or no cost at all. They can be graded for a wide range of ages and abilities and they can work either in clinic in teletherapy or the parent can use them with the child themselves okay so the first of these is called wiggly worms for wiggly worms we'll need a cereal box some clothes pegs and some q-tips these fell little cotton bud fellas okay so let's have a look at wiggly worms so for, first of all, we're going to take your cereal box. Importantly, you're just going to leave it open on one end. You don't have to do anything else. You're going to need your hand inside there to control your wiggly worms. I'm going to take a knife or obviously don't let your child do this part. Take anything sharp like a knife or even a pencil, something that makes a little like incision works better. I'm going to make several small little cuts all over the cereal box, okay? Punches don't work as well because I want the Q-tip, which are going to be my wiggly worms, to stick in and be held there, okay? So as they come up, my little wiggly worm can stay up or fall back down, okay? I want to take all my wiggly worms and stick them in my cereal box. Stick them all through, all right? Now I, can, I tend to be you don't have to do this part, but what I will do sometimes is if you take a handful of your wiggly worms, your Q-tips, just take a fistful of them and dip them in like watered down paint, even something like orange juice, and you'll get a whole bunch of yellow wiggly worms. Find something else like a beetroot juice or something, and you'll have red wiggly worms. You can have different colors as well to work, but it's not essential that you do that, okay? I've used this with just pinch grips without the clothes peg for toddlers who are just picking them up. And then for older kids, I, there's three different grip patterns we can use with the peg. Okay, so I've got my wiggly worms in my box. Some of them, for younger kids, I'll leave them sticking up real high like this so they can see them very easily and as they grab them. So the toddlers can just grab them and it actually sticks, takes a little bit of effort mm, to pull them out of the box, okay? Great for grip strength, great for that little, because it's quite small, the hand-eye coordination is quite uh, delicate, all right? With the clothes peg, we can use traditional, like wooden clothes pegs, or these guys. I like these guys because they're actually quite high. There's a heavy spring in it, so it takes a bit of effort to use it. First grip pattern, we can grip it like a fist for the younger kids, and they can grab a little wiggly worm if I hold it up. Then they can see the wiggly worm, grab it like this, then squeeze it with their whole hand to pull the wiggly worm out. Easy peasy. Next one is this traditional like clothes peg grip. Again, very good for working these pencil grip kind of dynamic strengthening those uh, thumb in the first two digits so they can do that one easy peasy or the one I prefer actually I like a lot instead of just using it like this use it like a pair of tweezers turn the goose peg around and use this end so then I'll do a, a, sometimes I'll get them to draw little eyes on the goose peg and make it like a little bird who's coming down to eat the wiggly worm mm. oh and grab the wiggly worm out, okay? So far, so ordinary, really, okay? You can make it much more engaging. Put your hand inside the box. Now you can control the wiggly worms. Ah! What I'll also do is, I'll occasionally get a fine liner, and I'll draw a little face, oh, a little anxious worm face on the wiggly worm. And he's trying to avoid the bird coming down. So I'll have my wiggly worm, who's terrified, don't eat me! And then the bird, the kid is controlling the bird. He's flying down and he's going to try and eat the bird. But because I'm holding the bottom of the Q-tip, I can try and pull it back inside. There's a bit of a tug of war. Oh, and the bird gets the wiggly worm. Okay? Easy peasy. So all you need is a cereal box. Cut small little holes. Stick the Q-tips in. You can move them up and down with your hand inside. You can leave them extended up really far for an easier grip. You can push them all down flat to make it slightly more tricky. The child can grip fisted, like so. They can pinch, or they can tweeze. And then you just make it silly and make it adventurous. So having more of a story to it, like it's a little bird, like you've got the little 
faces or colors on the Q-tips as well, or you're doing the moving your hand inside to do that, the tug of war push pull and the worms trying to hide back down when they see the bird coming, okay? And that is Wiggly Worms. Wiggly Worms is brilliant because the kids get so engaged in it and they really wanna get those little Wiggly Worms. Then I'll start even bringing Wiggly Worms friends up from inside. If their friend got picked up by a bird, then I can find where the little cup is there. Ooh, where is it? And then another one will pop out from inside the box. Pop! That they didn't even see. Boop. So I'll have a little handful of Q-tips already inside the cereal box. And they just start popping out from nowhere. So there's loads of ways you can make it way more fun. Clues pegs are fine. Younger kids can just use their pinch grips themselves. You can have a bird in each hand. You can have a race between siblings. You can even use things like your tennis ball buddy. He could be the bird. Oh, this can eat the Q-tips as well. There's a load of ways to make it more interesting, dynamic, and fun. But just as always, fun comes first before anything else, okay? And you'll get all those beautiful developmental uh, supports and that developmental learning inside the phone, okay? And that's it, that's Wiggly Worms. If you have any questions, or let me know in the comments, or as always, if you do use these activities, let me know, send me um, a little story about how you used it. I love getting those messages, and it's just amazing to me how far some of these videos have reached. So, for anyone who's watched them or shared them, thank you all so much, it's been fantastic. More to come, this is the first in the series of my like greatest hits, activities, and I will see you again soon. And that's it, Adam Newty, out.